runner's high describes the feeling of bliss after a session of strenuous exercise or a long period of jogging. And in this video, I will try to explain some of the neurochemistry behind the feeling of runner's high. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. In this video, I will discuss some of the recent findings related to the mechanisms of a runner's high. So a good question to start with would be what exactly is runner's high? There's a very good chance you felt it. The blissful intoxication that develops over long periods of aerobic exercise or long distance running. Indeed, surveys and studies of experienced distance runners report that most feel the runner's high, at least occasionally. This experience can be characterized by the feeling of content amidst a strenuous jog often accompanied by a sense of relaxation and the reduction in anxiety. There may also be a reduction in the sensation of pain or the effort required to keep on running. In the 1980s, scientists studying the mechanisms of exercise started to think about the neurochemical basis of this feeling. At that time, the effects were thought to emerge as a consequence of the body's own endogenous opioid or endorphin system. These molecules produce effects comparable to drugs like morphine or heroin, although much more mild. In particular, studies found increased levels of endorphins in the blood after a session of exercise. However, there was also skepticism of the notion that endorphins found in the blood could have any effect on the brain, because for that they would have to cross the blood-brain barrier. It happens that endorphins are really poor at crossing the blood-brain barrier. However, it could also be that these endorphins would be generated in the brain itself. So, if endorphins are not to blame, what is? That's the question. Some more recent studies have suggested that instead of endorphins, the effects of runner's high would be produced by the endogenous cannabinoids of our bodies. These are known as endocannabinoids. They essentially act similarly to the cannabinoid molecules found in the cannabis plant. The levels of endocannabinoids are upregulated in our bodies during pleasurable events like an orgasm. Endocannabinoids are also quite effective in passing the blood-brain barrier. Now, studies have, for example, looked at the production of endocannabinoids in dogs and humans during a session of running and found them to be upregulated. These approaches, however, cannot really establish more than a correlation between the upregulation of the endocannabinoids and the emergence of the runner's high. In a 2015 study, researchers gave either endocannabinoid antagonists or opioid antagonists to mice and let them run. On one hand, they found that if the endocannabinoid receptors were blocked, the animals ended up their run as anxious as they really began. On the other hand, when the endorphins were blocked, the mice were much, much more calm after the session of running. And essentially, these studies suggest that the endocannabinoids are in fact 
underlying the runner's high. However, we cannot really say all that much based on a rodent behavioral assay. I mean, we can't really ask the mice if they were feeling the runner's high. Or, I mean, we can, but I wouldn't be expecting an useful answer. Now, the most recent study to investigate this matter designed their trial for humans in particular. They recruited experienced runners for the laboratory experiments and assigned half to receive naloxone, a drug that binds into the opioid receptors and blocks their function, while the other half received a dose of placebo. They then tested the subjects in sessions containing either running or walking and found that most subjects reported a feeling of buzz, particularly during the running sessions or after them. No differences were seen between the naloxone and placebo-treated groups, suggesting that the endogenous opioids or endorphins were not responsible for these feelings. Conversely, increases in endocannabinoids were measured from the subject's blood. Now, while this experiment suggests that endorphins are unlikely to be involved in producing the runner's high, it didn't really directly test whether endocannabinoids would be producing these effects. So many of you may ask the question, why didn't the researchers give the subjects a dose of an uh, cannabinoid receptor antagonist, right? The answer to that question is uh, quite simple. There are virtually no endocannabinoid antagonists in the uh, market currently. There was one uh, endocannabinoid antagonist drug, but this was withdrawn from the European market after a uh, set of side effects came up in the post-launch surveillance. Perhaps we'll see more of those uh, type of drugs emerging in the future. It is also uh, important to emphasize that it's unlikely that a one set of neurotransmitters or receptors would be underlying the complex profile of both psychological and uh, physical effects. Nevertheless, these studies do strongly suggest that the endocannabinoid system is a key contender for producing the feeling of what is known as runner's high. So keep that in mind the next time you go for a, a long jog. Also remember to subscribe to my channel for future content and press like to support my efforts in producing these videos. Thank you for watching and until next time.